Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. So I, I hope you have the presentation of Eleonora somewhat fresh in mind because I will go into some of the uh, uh, same themes here. Uh, so this is very much, uh, I first want to mention this is very much a collaborative project with my colleagues uh, Paul Fife and Ben Lee who unfortunately could not uh, be here today but they are here in uh, spirit I hope. So I will first go into the background, uh, the historical background, so the, the periodical we are studying, the Illustrated London News. Then I will go into the problem of distant viewing uh, illustrations, so not photographs but illustrations. And then <coughs> I will sort of uh, dive into the two uh, aspects of our project, namely uh, using uh, computer visual models to collect images from illustrated newspaper pages, and then uh, the methods of applying uh, the multimodal clip uh, to study the illustrated uh, world uh, uh, of the illustrated London news. And then finally, I will say something about uh, our future uh, project. So first, something about the Illustrated London News. So the Illustrated London News, uh, as some of you might know, uh, was published uh, on 40, the 14th of May, 1842, and it's often considered uh, by many to be the first uh, visual mass uh, medium, right? So it's not photography, but it was actually illustration that provided uh, people with mass access uh, to visual uh, news for the first time in history. So it quickly became a huge success, selling millions of copies uh, every week, and it also uh, uh, sort of... Uh, there were many imitators of this famous English publication in the US, the Europe, uh, all over the place, actually. Uh, so it has been studied as a sort of a visual world, a window on the Victorian world, so used to study British identity, the British Empire, the visual representation of all sorts of new technology, think of the railway or the sewage system of London, but also many other uh, topics. And a common characteristic of all these studies is that it is basically that they uh, rely on close reading only a couple of images, right? So they mostly take 10 or maybe uh, 50 uh, images uh, to say something about this illustrated uh, world. But that sort of stands in, this method stands in sharp contrast with the thousands of images that the uh, uh, Illustrated London News actually published, right? So people are only looking, always looking at, have been looking at a small subset of these images. So the question that uh, Paul and Ben and I started our project uh, with is uh, if we can use these new computer vision tools uh, to look for patterns in the thousands of images of the Illustrated London News. Um, but the problem was that applying these uh, computer vision models uh, to the illustrations of the uh, Illustrated London News runs into many problems. And the most important uh, thing is, as uh, Paul noticed in an article in 2018, is that, they are, uh, that these models are trained on modern high-definition photographs and they uh, don't perform at all or very badly uh, on illustrations. Uh, secondly, uh, what is also a problem is that most of these computer vision models can only recognize a couple of uh, predefined classes, right? So they might be able to identify a chair, but they might not be able to identify, uh, like, let's, for example, say a carriage, which you might be interested if you're looking at the 19th century. And here uh, we sort of posit that multi -machine, multimodal machine learning uh, provides a solution. <coughs> However, I will first go into the first step of our project, namely collecting uh, the images from the digitized or scanned pages of the Illustrated London News. So for this initial step of our project, uh, we sampled two issues of the Illustrated London News uh, for every year between 1842 and 1900, and this results in a test set of around 1,200 uh, scanned pages. We then uh, used the newspaper navigator model, uh, which Ben developed uh, at the National Library of Cong Congress uh, to extract visual content from uh, early 20th century American newspapers to extract uh, illustrations uh, from the Illustrated London News. So this is actually not the Illustrated London News, but uh, it's the same uh, ID, right? So this is the French imitator. Uh, so the performance, the, the newspaper uh, navigator model performs very uh, well, but the problem is uh, that we have a very high recall, so it recognizes the illustrations on the page, but a very low precision, right? So it uh, recognizes the illustrations, for example, as a comic or an editorial cartoon, and these are all uh, categories that Ben uh, included in his uh, model. So in the end, uh, we combined all these different categories into one category and just set all of the images that were recognized by the model, uh, we say that they are illustrations. So this ended, we ended up with uh, around 1900, 900, sorry, so 1874 uh, illustrations. So we apply a clip uh, to these uh, images. So many of you have already heard a lot about clip, uh, I think, uh, at least uh, today, but also in previous days. So clip is trained on uh, modern uh, image text pairs uh, sourced from the internet, uh, around 400 million. 
for, uh, for CLIP itself. And it learns to connect, uh, in, during training, it learns to connect these text to these images, right? So it trains two uh, encoders, a text and an image encoder, to extract uh, uh, embeddings, so basically directions in a multi-dimensional space. And it learns to minimize the distance between uh, the original pairs in a multi-dimensional space and maximize the distance between all other uh, combinations. So what we, can we do with these uh, uh, multimodal models? So here I refer or sort of um, uh, shamelessly plug uh, our article with Melvin uh, that I wrote about the applications of the multimodal uh, models in digital humanities research. But <coughs> the most important thing is I think their zero shot application, right? So because the CLIP has learned to connect images with text, uh, we, are, we don't have to rely anymore on these predefined uh, categories. So we can basically ask the model to find visual concepts uh, of all uh, kinds of different things. So it also means that we don't have to label stuff anymore. We also don't have to train models uh, for specific uh, tasks. Um, and this is the, the second uh, main advantage, and this was already highlighted by Eleonora, is that they also, because the model is trained on not only on photographs, but also on illustrations, uh, it also performs very well on heterogeneous or mixed data sets, right? So uh, data sets that include images from different visual media, different periods, also different qualities. And in the end, we can use uh, the embeddings that uh, it extracts for different uh, cross-modality retrieval tests, right? So we have a text-to-image te uh, retrieval test, an image-to-text retrieval test, but also an image-to-image uh, -image retrieval test. And I will go into the first and the uh, third one. So this is going to be all very simple, right? So basically this is what Clip can do, is basically you can ask it for, uh, you can give the textual query and then it returns uh, the, um, uh, the image that is most relevant in the data set. And this is just to show that Clip is very good at recognizing visual concepts in illustrations, right? So you ask it for a horse and it returns a horse. The same thing goes for a steamship, right? So it's all very straightforward, but it's actually, uh, for somebody who has studied uh, illustrations for a long time, it's actually a huge uh, sort of improvement. Um, we also have an image-to-image -image classification or retrieval test, right? So we can not only uh, start with a, a textual query, but also with an image query. So here we start with an image of a horse, and the model returns uh, illustrations of horses uh, in the data set to us. Finally, and this is very interesting for me as a, study, uh, a scholar of 19th century uh, uh, illustrations, it's also very useful, this image-to-image uh, -image, uh, retrieval test, to study uh, visual reprint, right? There's lots of projects in the digital humanities about textual reprint, uh, but this uh, retrieval test also allows us to study uh, visual uh, reprint or visual scissor uh, based practices. <coughs> Finally, we can also use these, as we already saw, uh, also at Eleonora and previously with Fabian and uh, Leo. We can also use uh, the uh, model to have an image to image clustering uh, task, right? So what I, did, what I did here is first used uh, uh, k-means to cluster the clip embeddings, and then uh, place these uh, embeddings, these, these are all different colors, in a UMAP uh, visualization. <coughs> and here I added the thumbnails, so you can see that uh, the clip is actually very good at sort of recognizing relevant uh, clusters of visual concepts in our data set. So for example, you can see here that it has recognized all these uh, uh, famous and important men, uh, in the Illustrated London News, right? You can also see, for example, that it has another you know, a cluster, which is just basically all the headers of the Illustrated uh, London News. Right, <coughs> so for future work, this is a project which is continuing, uh, Multimodal AI Image Analysis and the Illustrated Periodical Press, which was very fortunately uh, funded by the Research Society for uh, Victorian Periodicals. And uh, what we hope to do is produce a new open access data set of the Illustrated London News where both the text, but also the circa 19,000 illustrations of the periodical are fully searchable, not only with textual, but also with visual prompts. So uh, in fact, as Leo already mentioned, a very visual ser search engine. Um, we also want to show that researchers can use our pipeline to produce similar uh, search engines or searchable image collections for other, other uh, periodicals that are currently online, for example, through the Internet Archive. We finally uh, hope to show that we also can <coughs> um, that these experimental uh, methods and case studies uh, sort of can also provide us with a new uh, view of the visual archive of the Victorian press, right? So multimodal machine learning allows us to look at, uh, uh, at, the, uh, at the first visual mass medium uh, with new and uh, fresh uh, eyes. Uh, this, this was this. Uh, thank you very much. <coughs>